today Above him there's no one Cause Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer For the world today Above him there's no other Cause Jesus is the way I know you got questions In the corners of your mind Traces of discouragement And peace you cannot find Reflections of your old past They seem to face you every day this one thing I know for sure is Jesus is the way. Y'all know this song? Sing it with me. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Cause Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Amen. Above him there's no other Cause Jesus is the way I know you got mountains That you think you cannot climb You say your skies are dark And you think the sun won't shine Well in case you don't know I'm here to tell you that the word of God is true and everything is promised. I know he will do it for you. Stand up and sing it with me now. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him. There's no other It's Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer, sing it again Jesus is For the world Above him There's no other It's Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer For the world today Above him there's no one Jesus is the way Jesus is the way Jesus is the way Sing it again y'all Jesus is the way One more time Questions in the corners of your mind, traces of discouragement and peace you cannot find. Reflections of your old past, they seem to face you every day. This one thing I know for sure is Jesus is the way. Y'all know this song, sing it with me. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Cause Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Amen. Above him there's no other. Cause Jesus is the way. I know you got mountains that you think you cannot climb. 
You say your skies are dark and you think the sun won't shine. Well, in case you don't know, I'm here to tell you that the word of God is true and everything is promised. I know He will do it for you. Stand up and sing it with me now. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. It's Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer. Sing it again. Jesus is. Above him there's no one Jesus is the way Jesus is the way Jesus is the way Sing it again y'all Jesus is the way One more time Jesus is the way Amen of your mind traces of discouragement and peace you cannot find reflections of your old past they seem to face you every day this one thing I know for sure is Jesus is the way y'all know this song sing it with me Jesus is the answer for the world today Above him there's no other Cause Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer For the world today Amen Above him there's no other Cause Jesus is the way now I know you got mountains That you think you cannot climb you say your skies are dark and you think the sun won't shine. Well, in case you don't know, I'm here to tell you that the word of God is true and everything is promised. I know he will do it for you. Stand up and sing it with me now. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer For the world today Above him there's no other It's Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer, sing it again Jesus is For the world Above him there's no one Jesus is the way Jesus is the way Jesus is the way Sing it again y'all Jesus is the way One more time Jesus is the way Amen Jesus 
Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no one. It's Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Cause Jesus is the way. I know you got questions in the corners of your mind. Traces of discouragement and peace you cannot find. Reflections of your old past, they seem to face you every day. This one thing I know for sure is Jesus is the way. Y'all know this song, sing it with me. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Cause Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Amen. Above him there's no other, because Jesus is the way. I know you got mountains that you think you cannot climb. You say your skies are dark and you think the sun won't shine. Well, in case you don't know, I'm here to tell you that the Word of God is true and everything is promised. I know He will do it for you. Stand up and sing it with me now. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above Him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. It's Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer. Sing it again. Jesus is for the world. Above him there's no other. It's Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no one. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. Sing it again, y'all. Jesus is the way. One more time. Jesus is the way. Amen. In the corners of your mind Traces of discouragement and peace you cannot find Reflections of your old past They seem to face you every day This one thing I know for sure Is Jesus is the way Y'all know this song, sing it with me Jesus is the answer for the world today, above him there's no other, cause Jesus is the way, Jesus is the answer for the world today, amen, above him there's no other, cause Jesus is the way. 
I know you got mountains that you think you cannot climb. You say your skies are dark and you think the sun won't shine. Well, in case you don't know, I'm here to tell you that the word of God is true and everything is promised. I know He will do it for you. Stand up and sing it with me now. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. It's Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer. Sing it again. Jesus is for the world. Jesus is the way, Jesus is the answer for the world today, above him there's no other, Jesus is the way, Jesus is the way, Jesus is the way, sing it again y'all, Jesus is the way, one more time, Jesus is the way, amen. Questions in the corners of your mind, traces of discouragement and peace you cannot find, reflections of your old past, they seem to face you. Every- Thank you for this evening. Accept our thanks and praises in the name of Jesus Christ. Be exalted, O God, be magnified, be glorified. Receive our thanks. Father, we ask, O oh God, that you glorify yourself as we have this discussion this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, seeing what is going on, I know you have some questions that you want me to address. So go ahead, sir, with your questions. Can you uh, go, ahead, go ahead, sir, with your questions? Yes. This is uh, Minister Oyaro, Benjamin Oyaro. He has some questions that he would love me to answer. So go ahead, sir. Yes. Uh, First and foremost, I want to welcome all our online viewers. Please give him more volume a bit so we can Yes, uh, we thank God for uh, this particular time that our, our pastor, my father and the Lord, that had God to just come and address some issues that are just happening globally. And you all know that uh, whatever is just happening is something that we really need to sit down and critically analyze and so sir uh, first and foremost I'd like to know that uh, we, we currently what is happening is kind of form of a plague according to my understanding sir and so with this understanding I'd like to understand sir what are some of the what are the causes of plagues sir all right plagues are things that happen um, adverse events yes that only God knows how it came about and can handle. Right. Many times when plagues come and you try to uh, do something about it, you get more confused. Until right. God gives the wisdom, plagues are incurable. Okay. Only God gives wisdom to cure plagues. All right. Plagues are pestilences or adverse events that attack lives. Okay. Most of the time, whenever there are plagues, people die in mass. 
That's what you see happening today in Italy. You see happening in the United Kingdom. It happened in Wuhan, China. A lot of people lost their life in one day or a few days. They just they were raised. So that's what we need to note concerning plagues. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. And so you wanted to know the causes of plagues. Yes, I wanted to know what All right. the causes of plagues. Now everyone hearing me hear me clearly. Yes. I will make mention of about fifteen of them or twelve of them. Chai. There are many things that causes plague. Okay. A lot of things. I will make mention of fifteen things that can cause a plague. Okay. From the Bible. May God grant us understanding, and in case you are passing through a play, God will heal you and deliver you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's go on. Number one, Genesis chapter 12, verse number 17. Genesis 12, 17. The Bible says, And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house okay. with great plagues because of Sarai, Abraham's wife. Okay. Yes, <laughs> sir. Because oh. every plague has a because. Wow. Plague don't just appear. There is always a cause. Because of Sarai, Abraham's wife. Now, Pharaoh saw Abraham's wife that she was looking beautiful. Okay. And desired her. And went after her. And went after her. And went after her and told Abraham, I want your love. And Abraham became afraid. And the Bible told the lies. And Pharaoh carried Sarah into his palace. And God baptized him with plagues because of Abraham's wife. When you run after another person's wife, get ready for a plague. <laughs> okay. So Pharaoh took another man's wife, and plague came after him. So those are one of that's one of the causes of a plague, sir. Because of because of Sarah, Child. Abraham's wife, that Pharaoh took oh. plague baptized. So in case you are taking somebody's wife, sorry for you. God is about to baptize you with a plague. Number two, Exodus chapter nine, verse one to four and verse thirteen to fifteen. Exodus chapter nine, verse one to four. And verse 13 to 15, the Bible says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh and tell him, For say the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go that they may serve me. If thou refuse to let them go, and withhold them still, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thy cattle which is in the field, upon the horses and upon thy asses, upon thy camel, upon thy horses and upon thy sheep. There shall be a great moraine, and the Lord shall see between the cattle of the, of the Israel and the cattle of Egypt, and there shall nothing die of all that is of the children of Israel. Verse 13. And the Lord said to Moses, Rise up early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus the Lord, God of the Hebrews, Let my people go that they may serve me. For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thy heart and upon thy servant and upon thy people, that thou may expect that there is none like me in all the earth. For now I will stretch out my hand, that I may smite thee and thy people with pestilence, and thou shalt be cut off from the earth. What was Pharaoh's offense? He refused to allow the children of God to serve God. Full stop. Whenever you refuse to allow people to serve God, a plague will catch you. When you create draconic laws that will not allow people to serve God, get ready for plagues. When you hinder people from serving God, get ready for plagues. When you disturb the service of God, get ready for plagues. When you will not allow the children of God to have an opportunity to do the will of God, you will bring a plague on the land. The Bible says, Pharaoh said, He will not allow them to give you all the things that God gave to himself. So, denying people opportunity to God brings plagues. Okay. Number three, the third thing that causes plague is in Exodus 11, verse number one. Exodus 11, verse number one. This point is like the second point. He says, And the Lord said to Moses, Exodus 11, verse number one. Exodus 11, 1, the Bible 
And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards he will let you go hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. He will kick you out by force. Now, the point here is, stubbornness in allowing people to serve God brings a plague. When you are very stubborn, you don't want people to serve God and you are doing it in a stubborn way. Get ready for plagues. Stubbornness in allowing you to serve God. Somebody who asks you, you want to go to church to go and pray and you stop it. And you stop only keep doing it. A plague will catch up with you. Your wife or your husband says you want to go to God's presence and you stop only so stop you from serving God. <laughs> Get your new for a plague. Your husband tells you God has called it and you refuse him from serving God. You create many obstacles to hold him back. Get ready for plagues. Stop only disallowing people from serving God. And stubbornness in allowing people from serving God brings a plague. Number four. The fourth thing that brings a plague is idolatry. Idolatry. Idol worship. When you stop worshiping God and start worshiping technology, worshiping, worshiping, worshiping all kinds of things, it brings plagues. Exodus 32 verse number 35. Exodus 32 verse number 35 says, And the Lord plagued the people. Why? Because they made the calf and which Aaron made. They made a calf and they began to worship the calf. They were bowing to the golden calf. The Bible says, God baptized them with a plague. Okay. They come to the calf. When you create something to replace God in your life, get ready for plague. When you invent something that you think it is better than God, get ready for a plague. And the Lord plagued the people because of the calf which Aaron made. Jeremiah chapter 19, verse number 5. Verse number 5 to 9, Jeremiah 19, verse 1 says, They have built also the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire from burnt offering unto Baal, which I commanded not, nor spake it, neither came it into my mind. Therefore, behold, the days come, say the Lord, that this place shall no more be called Tophet, nor the valley of the son of Enoch, but the valley of slaughter. Hmm. And I will make for the council of Judah and Jerusalem in this place. And I will cause them to fall by the sword between their enemies, and by the hands of them that seek their lives. And their carcasses will not give for me to the meat for the fowl of heaven, and for the beasts of the earth. And I will make this city desolate, and unhealthy. And everyone that passes that I shall be astonished and his because of all the plagues thereof. And I will cause them to eat the flesh of their sons and the flesh of their daughters, that they shall eat everyone the flesh of his friend in the siege and straightness, where with their enemies, and they that seek their life shall straighten them. When you are very, very idolatrous, and when a nation gets idolatrous, God baptizes them with plagues. And one of the plagues is that you people will be so poor or so wicked that you'll be eating each other. Parents will be consuming their children. In fact, friends will be consuming friends. The Bible says to us, they will be slaughtering each other until the place will become a valley of slaughter. When people are passing the weeds and say, Oh, uh, the valley of slaughter. Where men eat their brothers. Where men eat their children. Where fathers slaughter members of their family for food. <laughs> That's what it says. The plague will be so much. And it will end in the level of people eating their own children. You know, I pray that this plague and this epidemic be over so that poverty will not ravage the nations of the world. If poverty begins to ravage, people will start eating human beings. That is why all the uh, lockdown, lock up, curfew, <coughs> and then, um, 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 hold down and everything that is happening around the world should quickly stop. Because if it doesn't stop quickly, the government will keep food. Yes, after a while, the government will retire because by then we spend all the money in the treasury. It's uh, money will finish. 
then there is no productivity. Nobody is going to farm. Everybody are only indoors. Poverty will resume. Poverty is now another plague. When poverty resumes, sir, <laughs> people will now begin to kill their children to eat. People will be selling their friends as food. They will kill their friends. That's what the Bible says. Sir. So poverty is another plague entirely that accompanies other plagues. And it is a product of idolatry. When people refuse to serve God the right to the shoe. So plagues come and the climax of every plague is poverty. <laughs> the climax of every plague is poverty, sir. Let's go a little more, number five. The fifth cause of a plague is pride. I saw it in my Bible, chapter 49, verse 15 to 17. You know, the last point I mentioned, it has happened in this life before, when there was so much poverty that women began to donate their children for food. The Bible said they began to have me to take okay, I will kill my child today. Tomorrow. We eat. Tomorrow we eat your own child. And one woman ran away with some child. <laughs> the woman became dubious. Uh, yes. Uh, with so and after I agreed, but she ate the other woman's child. Uh, yes. It will not happen to the nations of the world in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So the fifth cause of plagues is pride. Okay. Jeremiah 49. Verse 15 to 17, the Bible says, For lo, I will make thee small among the heathen, and despised among men. Thy terribleness hath deceived thee, and the pride of thy heart. It says, O that thou dwellest in the cleft of the rock, and holdest the height of the hills, thou, though thou shouldest make thy nest as high as the eagle. I will bring thee down from there, say the Lord. Also, it shall be a desolation. Everyone that goeth by it shall be astonished, and shall hiss at all the plagues thereof. Why? Because of pride and be terrible. He says, Thy terribleness has deceived thee, mm -hmm. and the pride of thy. When you're a terrible person, and you are very proud, get ready for plague. Okay. The plague that will happen with people hiss at you. In Kenya, they click at you. They click. How do they click here? <coughs> now, they will hiss at you. Okay. Pride brings plagues. Okay. Being a terrible person brings plagues. That's what I said in my Bible. Okay. So, pride and doing terrible things must have already been on earth. So, you're saying yes. pride. And is is a is a is a is a brother to to doing terrible things, sir. Of course, when you are proud, you do terrible things, sir. Okay. <laughs> proud people always do terrible things to cover themselves. So, you know, pride is a product of inferiority complex. All right. Pride is a product of low self-esteem. Uh -huh. Pride is a product of insecurity. Child. When you are insecure, you will do anything to secure yourself, to cover up, to pretend. You can even kill, you cheat people, you always tell lies, you, are, you deceive because of pride. Okay. And pride, like I said, is given back to by low self-esteem, mm -hmm. frenzy complex, mm -hmm. insecurity. Mm -hmm. When you are insecure, you do anything to cover up. You always pretend. And it is, it is, it's all centered on pride. Whenever you see somebody who is only lying, covering up, this is a proud fellow. Are you me, sir? Yes, sir. So pride makes you do terrible things. Oh. <laughs> oh. Number six, sir. The sixth cause of plague is lust after the flesh. Lust. Lusting after the flesh. It brings plagues. You know, many times people lust. The Bible talked about it in Numbers 11, verse 4 to 6. And, num and uh, verse 33 to 34. Let's read it. It says, in Numbers 11, verse 4 to 6, and the mixed multitude that was among them fell and lost him. And the children of Israel also went again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? Flesh. Choma. Kukuchama nyama choma. In the spirit of flesh is when you want to act in the flesh. When you want to display arrogance, pride. 
when you want to display wealth, when you want to show that you are cunning and you are crafty, when you want to show that you are wicked and you can thief, when you want to put Puff up yourself and brag. That is loss of the that's loss of the flesh. When you want to show off, when you want to prove a point and oppress others. Now in the days of children, those was wanted to eat raw meat, kukuchama, yamachama, mbuzichama, in fact, chamaization. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, when you are always in the flesh, you will attack a play to yourself. Okay. When you love the works of the flesh, mm -hmm. fornication, adultery, mm -hmm. lasciviousness, uncleanness, witchcraft, variance, emulation, mm -hmm. when you always lost after flesh, you want to display, you want to show off, you are taking a place to yourself. The Bible says, for the said, who will give us flesh? Verse number 5, we remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumber, uh, the melons, and the leeks, and the onions, and the garlics. And now our soul is dried away. There's nothing at all beside this man that we said before us. Verse 73. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ah, it was chewed. The wrath of God was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a great plague, a very great plague, while they were eating flesh, while they were manifesting in the flesh. Why do I prove it a point? Plague came. Because I may call the name of the place Kibrot Hatava. Because there they buried the people that lost it. When you lost, get rid of a plague that will bury you. Okay. Hey, number seven. The seventh cause of plague. The seventh cause of the plague is producing evil reports. Is evil report. You will love amplifying evil report. You will love releasing evil report. You will love saying evil things. Always making people afraid. You will love making propaganda. You will love blackmail. You blackmail people to make them afraid. You will not produce evil report. You amplify evil report. When you are a producer of evil report, get ready for plagues. Numbers chapter 14 verse number 37 Numbers 14 37 The Bible says Even those men that did bring up Evil reports upon the land Died by the plague Before the Lord They died by the plague Before the Lord For bringing evil reports You love bringing evil reports to people. You love cooking it up what never happened, you create it. Mm -hmm. A little thing that happened, you amplify it and make it look very progress so that somebody can do trouble. Mm -hmm. It's an evil report. Okay. You always, you know, suspect it and then turn it to an evil report. You are attracting play. Wow. You use media to puff up something that never happened. Okay. You announce it on TV and people are shaking. You amplify evil. It's an evil report. You make evil look serious, you very bogus, you forget the report of the Lord, you report what evil. Maybe two people die, you say, hey, everybody has died. <laughs> everybody has died. Hey. You are the whole country. <laughs> you are a part of evil report, you are trying to play to yourself. Okay. You saw the police passing. You saw the police came. You said the police came. And you say that the only way they pass your problem and you amplify it, you are a jet of evil news. You are reporting evil. You love it. You are attracting the play to yourself. Wow. Always say things the way they are. Don't exaggerate. Okay. Don't bring up an evil report. Wow. Evil report attracts a play. Ooh. Number eight. Excuse me, sir. Let me show you the thing that brings plague. Eight thing that brings a plague. I want to appreciate all those who have joined us. Oh, Sister Sarah Mujabi, you're welcome. Sister DK Bet, you're welcome. Sister Catherine Minor, all the way from Ethiopia, you're welcome. Stanford Mutuku, you're welcome. Please tell everybody that we are already on, and it's very interesting to do. We are talking about causes and care of plagues. And with me on set, 
is Minister Benjamin Oyaro. And we're bringing the word of God, showing the things that causes plagues. We are now in the, in, in the seventh point. We are going to the eighth point. The eighth reason why plagues take place is murmuring. Yes, sir. Murmuring against God and against men of God. It brings plagues, sir. I saw it in my Bible. The Bible says in Numbers chapter 16, verse 41 to 48. Numbers 16, 41 to 48. But on the morrow, all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, saying, Ye have killed the people of the Lord. And it came to pass when the congregation was gathered against Moses and against Aaron, that they looked towards the tabernacle of the congregation and the road. The cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord appeared. And Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation, and the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Get you up from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell upon and they fell upon their faces. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a censer and put fire therein from off the altar, and put on incense and go quickly unto the congregation, and make an atonement for them. For there is wrath gone out from the Lord, the plague is begun. Verse 47 And Aaron took as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation of the road. The plague was begun among the people, and he put on his and made an atonement for the people, and he stood between the dead and the living, and the plague was stayed. They murmured against Moses and against Aaron, and the plague began. They murmured against Aaron and against Moses, and the plague began. Let that young man be standing. They murmured, and the plague began. They murmured. When you murmur against the will of God, against the servants of God, who are doing what God has sent them to do, you are attracting a plague. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 10. The Bible says, Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Who was the destroyer? Plague. <laughs> you are always murmuring. You are always murmuring, complaining, grumbling. Why is that person doing that? Why is God doing like me like this? Why, why, why is God not doing this? Why hey, this God? Are you sure that's God? God, are you upstairs? <laughs> that's how we talk to God. God, are you sure you are upstairs? Are you sure you are there? Hey, that's why you are threatening God. As you keep murmuring, you are attracting plague to yourself. Child. As you keep murmuring against God, against the will of God, against the word of God, against the men and servants of God, you are attracting plague against yourself. Get ready for plague. Oh. So I believe that one of the causes of the plague on earth today is because men, people are murmured against God, against servants of God, against the will of God, against the work of God. And many things like that. That's why there's plague. Okay. Number nine. The ninth reason why there is plague is, or plague's come, is because of fornication okay. and adultery or inordinate affection. Fornication, adultery, lust, you know, inordinate affection, incest, bestiality, bisexual, all sexual sins. Incest is when blood related people have sex. Bisexuality is somebody who sleeps with both men, men and women. Bestiality is when the human beings have sex with animals. Homosexuality is when a man has sex with a man. Lesbianity is when a woman has sex with a woman. All kinds of perversion, sexual sins, is one of the strongest causes of the plague. The Bible says in Numbers 25, verse 1 to 3, and verse 8 to 9. And Israel, verse number 1, uh, Numbers 25, verse number 1. And Israel abode in Shittim. And the people began to commit war done with the daughters of God. The people is fornication or adultery. They began to commit sexual sins with the daughters of God. If you check other versions of the Bible, the reverence of the comes you will discover that other versions of the Bible cause the fornication or adultery or sexual sins. The Bible says that they called the people unto the sacrifice of their gods, 
And the Lord will eat and bow down to their gods. And Israel joined the to bow poor. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against him. The anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. Verse number 8. And he went after the man of Israel to the tent. And turned both of them through. And the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. So the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. And those that died with the plague were 20 and 4,000. 24,000 died in one day of this plague. Why? God just released a sickness that they cannot explain that doesn't have cure. And in one day, 24,000 people expired under pressure. Except that Phineas ran after one man that was carrying the lady and was having sex with the lady in public. He took a javelin and turned it to the tent where he was. He lived to the world. And God's anger was stopped. So in other words, plagues is as a result of God's anger. So when God's anger was at peace, the plague, people stopped dying. So whenever you see a plague, it means God is angry. Fine, this one, it may not even be God that released it, but the angels of the devil created it and released it. And demons released this one. And it's only attacking humanity. <laughs> but God knew about it. Because God doesn't stop it. So, fornication, sexual seeds, activate plagues. Number 10, the tenth reason for plagues is the counsel of Balaam. I'm telling you, sir. The counsel of Balaam. Okay. When Balaam counsels you and you will be, you will be plague will support you. You will be, you will be blessed with a plague. <laughs> the counsel of Balaam. Okay. Numbers 31 verse number 6. You better be careful who is counseling you. Okay. When Bala comes to you, you'll be in trouble. Plagues will locate you. The Bible says in Numbers 31 verse 16, Behold, this caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Bala to commit trespass against the Lord in the matters of poor pure. And there was a plague among the congregation okay. why? because of the Balaam. Balaam is an evil counselor. Who is counseling you, sir? Who is counseling you, man? Be careful who is counseling you. The Bible talked about, you know, uh, uh, Jezebel counseling her husband to do evil. We're talking about the son of Jezebel, which is having the truth. He was counseled by his parents to do evil. Who is counseling you? Okay. Whoever is counseling you can attract a plague to your life, especially when there are Balaams. Balak was the one that counseled Balak that he should release his, uh, uh, his uh, country ladies to go and seduce Israel. And then the Moabites became seductresses. They were the ones that invented uh, uh, hot pants, bikini. Bikini, spaghetti top, indomie bra, macaroni trousers, they are the inventors. It was the Moabites that started wearing it. When they wore it and they started shaking up and up, the children of Israel began to shake after them and run after them and the anger of the Lord was kept with the Now the plague came because of the counsel in my group. So beware of wicked counsels. Wicked counsels can attract the plague. That's why Paul the Apostle dealt with um, uh, that man that was with Sergius Paulus. The, 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 what do they call that man's name? The sorcerer. Bar Jesus. Bar Jesus, yes, Bar Jesus. Uh, he creates a barrier so that Jesus does not penetrate him. The Bible says he was a counselor. To St. Okay. So Paul the apostle commanded him to go blind because he had the counsel of Bala. All right. Are you on the Yes. Again, have you discovered that the man who and the king in the days of Elisha was the one that said the prophecy of the man of God will not come to pass? Okay. And the man of God touched him a plague and told him, You will see with your eyes, but you will not eat with your mouth. And truly the guy saw. He saw the mighty blessings of God and the, and the prophecy of Elisha coming to pass. 
and they made it the chief distribution officer, and the people got angry and matched it. See, whenever you see things happening, nothing just happens. Something is making the thing happen. You know, the people pushed him down because it was a line up according to your height. It's a line up according to your age. On that stuff of business. Is it according to height or according to age? And they is too much, and they pushed him down, and they trapped on his diet. By the time they got home, they remember, hey, that man, by the time they got there, he was flat on the floor. He didn't match him until he became flat. Whenever you see anything happen, nothing just happens. There's always a cause for whatever is happening. Okay. So, the council of Balak can bring a plague like we saw here. Right. Number 11, sir. The eleventh cause of a plague is disobedience. Wow. Outright disobedience or subtle disobedience or partial obedience. All of them are disobedience. Wow. When you have not obeyed the will of God, when you have not obeyed the word of God, when you have not obeyed the counsel of the most high, get ready for a plague. Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight, verse fifty eight to sixty two. Is it to read it? 58 to 62. The Bible says, If thou wilt not observe to do all the word of this law that is written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God, then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful. <laughs> when you are disobedient, your own plague will be very wonderful. Okay. <laughs> the Bible says, the plague of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuance, it will continue for a long time, and so sicknesses, and of long continuance, the, sick, the kind of sickness that will come will stay long with no cure. Okay. It says, moreover, it will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou was afraid of. And they shall cleave unto thee. The disease will hug you and hold you tight. It says, uh, also every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, the one that is not written in the Bible, uh -huh. then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. Oh. Like it's destroying the Bible by the word now. And you shall be left few in number. Whereas you are as the stars from heaven for multitude, because thou who does not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. Wow. So the obedience brings plague that makes people to become few. Wow. That reduces the population of nations. Therefore, make sure you are not a disobedient child of God, or you are an outrightly disobedient fellow. Get ready for plagues you never bargained for. The plagues will come and make you a wonderful person. People see you and you want to say, Hey! <laughs> you know, I grew up in Yoruba land where they came back to me. One that is called Iyanu. Okay. Iyanu. You understand? Iyanu. Say it. Iyanu. 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 Uh -huh. the, the, the literal interpretation of the word Iyanu means Iya. Enu. The opening wide of the mouth. Iyanu. Wonderful. Enu is mouth. Okay. Iya. Iya enu is tearing of the mouth. <laughs> so that means your own plague will never open the mouth. Ha! Ah, like Iyanu. Sir, so what do you call it? To wonder what happened to this part. They wonder, sir. What they see become wonderful. <laughs> Then because you refuse to obey the voice of the Lord your God, he will make you an Iyan. He will say, ah! When they see you, yeah. you'll be a wonder. You'll be an Iyan. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. It will not be a portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. So these are some of the causes of plagues. Number 12. The 12th cause of a plague. Everybody needs to take payments from this. Yes. Pay serious attention to what I'm about to say. The twelfth cause of the plague is demonic provocations. Oh. Demonic provocations. When demons provoke things, it can bring plagues. First Chronicles 21, verse number 1, verse 22, 
then verse 26 to 27. First Chronicles chapter 21, verse number 1. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Satan stood up and provoked David. Demonic provocation, sir. When devils provoke things to happen, it can result in a plague. Verse 22, the Bible then David said to own honor, grant me the place of this treasure floor, grant me the place of this treasure floor, that I may build an altar glory to the Lord, that thou grant it me for full price, that the plague may be stayed from the people. The provocation brought plague. Demonic provocation. When the devil provokes a plague like what is happening on earth today, it is partly demonic provocation. Wow. It can sweep away a lot of people and kill them like it's doing today. Demonic provocation, sir. It brings plagues. Look at He provoked David. Verse 26. And the Lord commanded the angel. The Bible says in verse 26. And then he built an altar to the Lord. Verse number 26. And offered burnt offering and peace offering and called upon the Lord. And he answered him from heaven by fire upon the altar upon offering. Verse 27 says, And the Lord commanded the angel, and he put up his sword again into the sheet thereof. Okay. So he took sacrifice to stop that plague. So sacrifice can cure plagues. Okay. We see it in that scripture. Hallelujah, praise God. Hallelujah. I'm still coming to the plagues anyway. Alright, number 13. The 13th cause of a plague is leading a nation to commit sins. When a leader leads a nation to commit sin. When a leader leads a nation to commit sin. Second Chronicles 21 from verse 9 to 15. When a leader leads his people to commit sin, they attract plagues. It attracts plagues. Leading nations to commit sin by the leader. Second Chronicles 21 from verse 9, the Bible says, then Jehovah went forth with his princes, and all his chariots with him. And he rose up by night and smote the Edomites with capacity, and the captains of the chariot. So the Edomites he went from under the hand of Judah to this day. And at the same time also the Libran revolt from under his hand, because he had forsaken the Lord God of his fathers. Verse 11, moreover, he made, because he forsook the Lord God of his fathers. Watch it again, moreover. And cause the inhabitants of Jerusalem to commit fornication and compel Judah there to be compelled them to commit sin. The Bible says, and there came a writing. David, because thou hast no work in the ways of Jerusalem. He made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to go and war like unto the waters of the house of Israel, and also as slain thy brethren of thy father's house, which were better than myself. The atrocities are plenty. Verse 14, Behold, with a great plague will the Lord the people, and thy children, and thy wives, and all thy goods, and thou shalt have great sickness by the disease of thy powers, until thy powers fall out. By reason of the sickness, day by day. Chai. He fell into sin and he made others to follow him. That is the worst thing that he did. He forced people and compelled them to commit sin. And God got angry with him. God baptized him, his children, his wives, and everybody connected to him with plague. And God gave him a very special plague that started eating him up. The Bible says, until his power, his stomach fell out of his buttocks. He went to the toilet and his stomach came out. <laughs> his bowel, his large intestine and small intestine came out from his detox from the toilet. Then he could not be cured. If you read that scripture very well, he even went to physicians. Doctors helped him. They did surgery. They used rope to tie him. The bowel kept on falling out. It was a plague. Plagues are special diseases that doesn't have cure. 
it is until the mercy of God comes that the cure comes. If the mercy of God does not come, forget it. The cure can even be this flower, but you never see it. Remember, there was a certain man who was sick unto death. What is Ezekiah? He was sick unto death. The Bible said God sent the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, to go and announce him that he will not live, he will die. The Bible said the man turned his face to the world and prayed seriously. Prayer can kill the children. Wow. He prayed. While he was praying, God had his prayers and stopped the son of Amos to go and talk to him again. And the man of God told him that you will not die anymore. God has changed his mind. He is adding to you 15 more years. The Bible says that God opened his eyes and he saw there was a tree at the back of his house. And he took the leaf and put on his body and the sickness disappeared. The healing was just close by, but he couldn't see it because of the place. When a play comes upon you, the healing will be here. You will not see it until you die. Plagues are terrible, sir. Plagues are terrible things. They are not good at all. The man did not know that the tree, one tree at the back of his house could kill him. He was on his way to die. If not for the prophetic intervention like I was preaching yesterday. If not for the prophetic direction. Prophetic proclamation that delivered him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So you need to understand that leading the nation to sin can bring a plague. Number 14. The 14th thing that bring plague is hating a child of God. Wow. Yes, sir. When you hate a child of God, you bring a plague to your life. Hey. I have seen that happen several years around my life. People that hate me enter to some terrible problem that they cannot solve. Hating a child of God, getting angry with a child of God, getting uh, not only the servant of God, the servant of God is more. Because the plague that will baptize you will be very heavy. Hating a child of God attracts plague, sir. Gee. The Bible says in Psalm 89, verse 23. It's in the Bible, sir. Wow. Psalm 89, verse 23. The Bible says, and I will put down his face before his face. I plague the death that hate him. Yes, sir. I will plague them that hate him. Verse 23. Multimedia is. Psalm 89, verse 23. Verse number 23. I will plague them that hate him. <laughs> when you hate a child of God, you attract a place. When you hate a servant of God, you will you have that, that plague to your life. Over plague with the one over you will swim, you will baptize, you have a baptism by immersion is that place. So it's very dangerous to hear the child of God or servant of God. Wow. Number 15. Wow. Number 15. The 15th reason for plague is demonically inspired inventions. Wow. When you settle with demonically inspired invention, when the things you are using are demonically inspired, when you love de demon inspired inventions, Things that are is invented from hell, they attract plagues. Psalm 91, no, sorry, Psalm 106, verse 29. Psalm 106, verse number 29. The Bible says, Thus they provoked him to anger with their inventions, and the plague break upon them. They provoked him to anger by what? They are inventions. The Lord is saying, it is a free world. Oh. Leave me alone, I can do anything. There is no free world anywhere, sir. And you just invent something and you are doing it. My, my invention, my choice. Yes, my invention, so my invention, my choice. So it can, it's me that invented it, so what is it? Shy. And you forget the Asian landmarks. Oh. You forget the path that the Almighty has set up that we should follow. And you invent your own way. And you are inspired by the devil to invent it. You bring a major plague up. It says, and the plague break in upon them. What? Demonic inventions. So be careful what you are inventing. You are inventing new things. Inventing new ways to communicate. Inventing new ways to lie. 
new ways to die. New and uh, it's in fact all those new fashion is new ways to die, sir. I'm telling you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Those are the fifteen things that I've discovered in my Bible that can cause plagues. And I know that what is happening on earth today falling between seven of these fifteen points. Okay. Hallelujah. Yes. And so sir, I wanted to know. Uh, You've already expanded on everything that I really wanted to ask you, sir. But there is one thing I would like you to expound on. Currently, what is happening on Earth now? Do you think we would like to have more expansion? Do you think it is part of what you're saying, sir? Of course. Yes. If we check, there are some nations that are now they hate God. I'm telling you. So, idolatry. Okay demonic invention. I'm telling you, sir. In fact, the 15 points are current. I'm telling you, sir. If you check nations, many nations have attracted the anger of God to themselves by it. Okay. By doing those different things. Alright. Some nations are persecuting children of God seriously. That is bringing plague. Wow. Some nations are doing wickedness of different kinds. Deceiving people. Okay. Some nations that used to obey God before that felt disobedient. Wow. Attracting punishment to themselves. Oh. Those are things that attract plagues. Wow. And so another thing I would like to you to expound on. Do you think believers are exempted? Yes, there are exemptions to plagues. Okay. I'll show them to you now. Wow. Carry on, sir. In Psalm 91 from verse 1. How do you first of us ten? The Bible says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty God. Let's go to verse 10. There shall no evil before thee. Wow. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling place. So point sure. number one, uh -huh. dwell in the secret place of the most high will be accepted. Wow. Dwelling in the secret place of the Most High exempts you from plagues. Wow. Prayers, mm -hmm. like Ezekiah prayed, is part of dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. Worshipping like David mm -hmm. is part of dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. Mm -hmm. When you dwell in the secret place of the Most High, you are exempted from plagues. No plague will come near your dwelling. Plagues don't like the presence of God, they fear it. Wow. Command the presence of God in worship. Mm -hmm. Command the presence of God in prayer, mm -hmm. you shall be exempted from plagues. Wow. Yes. It is correct. It is to the point. I'm telling you, sir. When you are abiding under the shadow of the Almighty, plagues cannot trouble you. I'm telling you. Number two. Numbers chapter 8, verse 19. Numbers 8, 19. The Bible says, and I have given deliverance as a gift to Aaron and to his sons from among the children of Israel to do the service of the children of Israel in the tabernacle of the congregation and to make an atonement for the children of Israel that there be no plague among the children of Israel when the children of Israel come near unto the sanctuary. Now, being a priest exempts you from plagues. One. Number two, it empowers you to remove place for people. Okay. I like that person. Being a priest, a servant of God, mm -hmm. a true genuine servant of God, empowers you to be removing place from people. So you are unplagued. You are plague boost. <laughs> you are plague amp. You are you are shielded from plagues by being a servant of God. You know that reminds me of the story of a certain man of God in the days of bubonic plague, the black plague. Okay. His name is John G. Lakes. If you check the course general, you will see the history of that man there. According to that history, that man of God was so loaded with the power of God that People were running away from Marcus who had the plague. But he was not running away. He rather went and was helping them. And the medical practitioners that helped, some medical practitioners died. But he kept on helping them, kept on helping them. And then one day people began, became curious. How come this man is helping them, carry their vomit, carry the sick people, and he refused to catch the sickness? What is special?
special about this guy. And they took him and took him to a laboratory. And they gathered the virus that came back to the body clinic. And they poured it on his hands. And they put a magnifying that they were watching. And they saw fire come out of his body and consume the virus. Whoa. That is what happens when you are a priest. And there's an anointing that God puts on you that shoots you from plagues. <laughs> there's an anointing that makes you unplagable. Okay. That makes you plague proof. <laughs> it's like an, uh, we are wearing bulletproof. Wow. And then God gives an anointing to cure it in the life of people. Normally when you talk to somebody who has a virus, you contact the virus. But when you are a true servant of God, when you talk that person, the fire of God you will eat up the virus. Okay. <laughs> the, the virus will run from you. Wow. So it pays to serve Jesus. Okay. It pays to be a genuine priest of the Most High God. It shoots you and then also makes use of you to help others. Wow. Number three, the third thing that brings an exemption from places. When you are a covenanted child of God, according to Psalm 73, verse number 5, Psalm 73, verse number 5, the Bible says, They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Why? Because of the covenant. When you walk in covenant relationship with God, you are unplagued. You will not be like other men. A lake attack a brother do ship a suit. I pray for everyone hearing me right now. May the covenant you have in Christ exempt you from every plague in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. A lake a brother do ship a suit. Ezekiel take a brother do shatter. Yata la brother do set a lady. Everyone that is already suffering, I reactivate the covenant. That you are with the most high God by the power in the blood of Jesus. And I decree because of this reactivation, you are exempted. Amen. You are exempted. Amen. You are exempted Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That is why you need to stick with God. When you stick with God, the covenant of exemption will be activated over you. Amen. The Bible said they are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men. So you know that work like a man. So there's a distinction. There's a distinction, sir. Wow. Hallelujah. Praise God. Number four. The fourth thing that can exempt you from plagues is a, mm, Exodus 12, verse number 13. Exodus 12, 13. The Bible says, And the Lord shall be to you for a token upon the houses where we are. And when I see the Lord, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Hallelujah, praise God. So the blood of Jesus Christ exempts you from every plague. Who did God send me to today? I activate the power of the blood of Jesus upon Hallelujah. you. And I declare you exempted from coronavirus. Amen. I declare you exempted from any other virus. COVID something, something. And SARS, something, something. SARS, all kinds of viruses. In fact, I was thinking that we were going to have a, since they say MATO. Since they, this one, they say SARS, it's SARS. There's SARS, then they tell them it's MARS. Try. I don't care whether it's SARS or MARS or Corona or COVID or whatever they call the name. You are exempted by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. If I go send me to receive the word. Amen. Including those already in quarantine, mm. all those already discovered to be positive, mm. I speak by the apostolic unction that God gave to me. Mm. I decree you are exempted in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will not die like other men have died. Mm. You are sent and set free today. Mm. In the name of Jesus Christ. The mark of the blood of Jesus accepts. Mm. Because they want to see the blood. I will pass over you and the plague will not be upon you. So let nobody trouble me. Let the plague trouble me. For I bear upon my body the mask. Jesus. So glory to God. You are exempted. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll give one more point and I'll begin. 
pray as soon as I pray. Whoa. I need to pray for someone. I'm telling you, sir. I need to pray for someone. In the Kabaga do she press it. One more point. Mm -hmm. Living in Goshen exempts you from plagues. Hey. When you when you locate your house in Goshen, mm -hmm. a place where God watches over. Mm -hmm. You know, there's one of my sons and one of my, the pastors in our ministry. You know, we were not telling me so we remember. Mm -hmm. One day he called me and said to me, Man of God, my pastor says, Sir. See, I just got a house and I want you to come and dedicate the house. Agreed. Because that is the service I should render to I'm telling every you. member of the church. If I'm not available, then I ask my other pastors to do it. Mm -hmm. So I followed him to go and bless the house. As we were traveling towards the area where the house was, the anointing began to leave me. Oh. I began to feel like I'm not a man. I remember, the Bible says in that scripture that we read that you will not be plagued like every other man. Mm -hmm. I began to feel like something that the anointing had departed. Then I called him, he spoke, and he answered me on phone. And I said, where are you taking me to? He told me, he's taking me to the new house that he just rented. I said, I'm feeling in me that you have, you have pitched your tent towards Soto. I don't want to go on this journey anyway. He said, why, sir? Please, this place is not far. So I said, me I said, no. As I kept on approaching and getting closer to the place, the anointing began to leave. And I challenged the anointing so much. I need the presence of God to be able to bless your house. I quit on this journey and I'm going back. So I turned back. And I said, if I'm your pastor, meet me in church. He also turned back and met me. I said, sir, what happened? So I explained to him. As I began to go, the anointing began to depart from me. I need the anointing to do all the things that God was sent me to do. And I wouldn't want to go anywhere the anointing would not be able to do with me. So I said, if I be your pastor, go and collect your money back. Go stay there. He agreed. He went, collected his money, got another house elsewhere. Few months down the line, another person that we know, living in the same area, was shot dead in the same area. Shot dead. When I had a little fear, I entered into me. Then I told him, You see what I'm talking about? They were going to live in the same compound with that guy. And the guy was shot dead. And I told him, It was good that they didn't follow you there. And you obeyed me by making sure you never pitch your tent towards Sodom because the presence of God is not in Sodom. When you pitch your tent in Goshen, excuse me, sir. No plague will look at you. See your Bible. Exodus 9. From verse 1 to 4. Then the Lord said unto Moses. Exodus chapter 9 from verse 1 to 4. Go in unto Pharaoh. And tell him to say the Lord said of the Hebrews. Let my people go. That they may serve me. And if God refuse to let them go. And will with, with whole time still. Behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thy cattle, which is in the field, upon thy horses, upon thy asses, upon thy camels, upon thy oxen, and upon the sheep. There shall be a very great moraine. Moraine is the threat of animals. And the Lord shall severe, God shall separate between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt. And there shall nothing die of all that is in the children of Israel. For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thy heart, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, that thou mayest know that there is none like unto me in all the earth. Because I will separate my people, and the people who are living in the place called Goshen. Do you know that the plague took place everywhere, but nothing happened to those in Goshen? Locate your Goshen. Locate your Goshen. Settle in your Goshen. Don't live in Egypt. Every Egypt has a Goshen. Locate your Goshen. You know, I read the Bible. The Bible says where there was a second man living in the place where there would be I saw it in the Bible, in the book of Revelation, where Satan dwelleth. You know, the Bible talked about it. I saw it. Revelation chapter 2, verse number 13. Revelation 2, verse number 13. It says, I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan cities, and thou holdest fast my name. And has not denied my faith, even in those days where Antipas was my faithful matter, who was slain among you, we are Satan dwelleth. There is a place where 
that is where there is no house that is not to play there. Locate your goshen. Run away from where Satan dwelt. When you are there, they will kill you. Let me finish you. Always stay in goshen. Stay in the place God has anointed and prepared for you. Don't stay in the place where you stay and you regret you ever stayed there. Especially where Satan dwelt. I want to stop here. I want us to pray for all those that have disobeyed God, the nation have disobeyed God, and they are passing through attacks. Father, please have mercy on them. Cause them to fall on their knees and return back to Jesus. Let's go ahead and pray. take a break and go shoot us up. take a break and go shoot us up. Lord, I'm asking, oh God, that you have mercy upon the nations of the world. Every nation that will offend you will turn the way from you. And an attractive place, let them ask him that your past will come upon them. And you will come by your son of your trustees and ask him for mercy. And you will repent from their sins in the name of Jesus Christ. Confront them, O Lord God, and make them forgive us. who have taken other people's wives, the nations where people enjoy taking other people's wives, and have brought plague upon them, Father, have mercy upon them, let them repent. He them with the hammer of repentance, and let them repent, yes. in the name of Jesus Christ, and let them begin to return the wives of people that they take, yes. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we of God to come upon nations that are very stubborn and have to move from serving God, that they repent and begin to serve God. Go ahead. Father, we are asking for the
Above him there's no one 